Okay, learning objective four is all about something called a production cost report. It is uh, the, the critical thing to understand in this part of the chapter. It's a very important document that's used uh, to show basically the production of a department and the cost. Okay. Um, each department will actually prepare one. And it's done in four steps that we're going to be looking at one at a time. Of course, you already kind of know some of these steps. Uh, the physical units, we have followed physical units before. Equivalent units of production, what we just learned in objective three. The only thing that's really going to be different here is actually computing the costs and putting all that together in what's called a cost reconciliation schedule. So let's review the, the first uh, two steps and learn the last two. So let's go back to our ego. In case you didn't want to let go of, of my ego. Um, you, have, you can't let go yet because it's still part of the book. So this is page uh, 99 <clears throat> in your book. This illustration is there. Again, we start with raw materials. We have labor and overhead. And as we know, the, uh, the Ego Waffle uh, goes through three different departments, right? The mixing department, the baking department, and the freezing and packaging department before it becomes a finished good. <clears throat> well, these particular departments have to um, follow the flow of production as much as possible. Uh, very accurately, in fact. And so they are each going to be producing this production cost report that you're going to learn about, that you're learning about in this particular um, objective. Okay. So that's the flow. But each department has to understand its production costs. This is a, um, a big illustration here. It starts on page, the bottom of page 99, and it goes uh, over to page 100. Um, let's, you know, this is important to sort of understand that uh, for Kellogg Company, uh, this is basically the production cost report. Yeah, production cost report. This uh, tells us the production in terms of units, right? Uh, units completed and transferred out, and the work that's still in process. And this part of the report tells us all about the costs. Um, the costs of the work in process, <clears throat> costs of the work uh, during the month for labor, uh, for materials and conversion costs, and the costs that uh, happen for that entire month for the mixing department, okay? So we're gonna look at one little part of the time. So the first step in understanding that report is looking at the physical units, the actual number of ego waffles that in this case, the mixing department uh, has put together, right? Um, we're also looking at, um, the total units that need to be accounted for. So that's the units that uh, have been started or transferred, plus the units that are there at the beginning of the period. Then we have to look at the units that have been transferred out during the period and what's left in terms of units and process. So let's take a look at the physical flow. Well, this is the physical flow, <coughs> pardon me. Um, the units to be accounted for show that at the very beginning of June, um, they had 100,000 Ego waffles in process. And during the month of June, they started 800,000 more Ego waffles. And so in total, 900,000 Ego waffles need to be accounted for. Okay, 
So where are those 900,000 waffles right now at the end of June? Well, 700,000 of the 900,000 are done. They're completed, and this is the mixing department. They've been completed by the mixing department and transferred to the next department, which would be baking, okay? And then at the end of June, they still have 200,000 of the 900,000 units that are still being worked on in the department as of June 30th. So this is how we account for the 900,000 waffles. Step two, again, which we've already seen, um, we compute the equivalent units, units of production, how many actual waffles based on um, the materials used and the conversion costs used. So in order to do equivalent units for waffles, in this case, uh, we have to look at them in terms of how many equivalent units for the materials? Now, since all of the waffles start with all the ingredients up front, all 900,000 units of waffles have been accounted for in the materials costs. But in terms of the conversion costs, right, that's labor and overhead. <clears throat> Obviously, if the unit has been transferred out, it's complete. So all of the conversion costs are in the 700,000 waffles that we sent from the mixing department to the baking department. However, of the 200,000 that are left, only 60% of them are complete regarding conversion costs. And so we could say for conversion costs, we only have about 120,000 of the 200,000 waffles complete and accounted for. And so the equivalent units of waffles looking at conversion costs would be 820,000 waffles, okay, for conversion. For materials, all of them. But the, for conversion, <clears throat> it's a little bit of a different number. That's where the com computation comes in. So we've seen this before. This is not something that's overly difficult so far, right? We've already gone through two steps in roughly three or four minutes. I mean, it's really not that bad because we've seen those before. What's gonna be different is starting with step three right here, okay? This is gonna be a little bit different. And if you want, you can follow along on page 101 in your book, although you'll see these illustrations here as well. So now what we actually have to do is we actually have to compute the costs the actual production costs of those equivalent units, okay? And again, when we're looking at um, equivalent units, we still have to account for materials that have been used. We still have to account for the conversion costs, right? Um, and thus we can understand what the total manufacturing costs of those waffles are, okay? So here we go. <clears throat> and again, we're looking at page 101 if you want to, uh, to look. So in terms of the material costs uh, for, those, uh, for those egos, when you look at the direct material costs, it'll tell you that there are $50,000 of direct material costs for, uh, for the Agos, okay? And then we look at the direct material costs, so the costs that were added to production during the month of June. We, we created a lot of Agos during the month of June, so we have a lot more material costs added uh, the book tells us that it's 400,000 additional. So total materials were $450,000. And that's a lot of flour, baking soda, and eggs, okay? But um, that's basically what the mixing department used for materials in June. So, <coughs> excuse me. Knowing that they used $450,000 of materials, and that produced the 900,000 
waffles. Because again, waffles have all the materials in them up front. So all 900,000, okay. That means that each waffle costs them 50 cents in materials to make, okay. So what we're doing here in this illustration, and again, the book provides you with the information for costs, is we're totaling up the cost, in this case is strictly for materials. When you look at the previous report, let me go back. Materials, all 900,000 units have all the materials. So this is where we get the 900,000 from. Okay, part two. So this 900,000 came from step two, previous. This information was given to you um, from the book. So $450,000 of materials divided into 900,000 waffles is 50 cents per waffle. Unit material cost 50 cents, okay, per, per waffle. So you have to know that piece. The next thing they're gonna ask you <clears throat> to do here is the conversion costs, okay? Now the conversion costs are gonna be a little bit different in terms of equivalent units. Now here in the book, they actually give you the information you need for conversion costs. They tell you, for example, that conversion costs, if for a work in process, as of June 1st, were 35,000. And then they added another 170,000 of conversion costs through the end of June. And so the total conversion costs, labor and overhead, for the month of June was $205,000. When you take that $205,000 of conversion costs, we're dividing it into the equivalent units for conversion costs. So that other number on that report I showed you was 820,000. Because that's the equivalent units for conversion cost purposes, not the 900,000 because 900,000 had all the materials in it, but not all the conversion costs. Right. So we divide that by 820,000 and thus the conversion costs add 25 cents per ego. Okay, so materials are 50 cents per ego, conversion costs 25 cents per ego waffle. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you add the material cost of 50 cents to uh, per waffle to the conversion cost of 25 cents per waffle, each waffle will have a total manufacturing cost of 75 cents. And this is step three. Okay, are we doing okay so far? Yeah, I got a couple of thumbs up here. Yes, yeah, okay. So it's, I, I, it's just a little time consuming to go through the step, step by step by step, but it's, it makes some sense. You just get, this is probably the first time seeing it, so it's gonna be taking a little bit of time to get it done. But as you see, it's not that difficult to understand. All right, so that's the end of step three, which means the last thing we gotta do is step four. Now step four, um, this is on page 102 and 103, okay? Page 102 and 103. Um, here is where we actually have to have what we call a cost reconciliation schedule, all right? Um, here, uh, and this is what we'll look at. So Kellogg, uh, had total costs of $655,000 um, that the mixing department incurred in June. How do we get the 655? Well, the 85,000 in work in process at the beginning of June, plus the 570,000 of costs that went through production in June, okay? So that's where they get the 655 in total costs. Um, how do they reconcile it? Well, <clears throat> again, we know that every waffle that's complete 
right? Has all the materials, has all the conversion costs. We know those are 75 cents each for costs. So if we figure, if we transferred out 700,000 of those to the baking department and they cost us 75 cents each, cost us to make in the mixing department, that's $525,000 of costs for those waffles that have been done and transferred out. For the work in process, what we have left is 200,000, right? Uh, for materials, uh, all 200,000 have the materials in it. 100% of the materials are there. And we know the material costs were 50 cents. Okay. And so here we have um, $100,000 of material costs, which are the 200,000 equivalent for materials plus the 50 cent at 50 cents each. The conversion cost, we know conversion costs added another 25 cents per each waffle. Let's see, these two numbers is where this number came from because all of these are complete. But only uh, a, a certain percentage, 60% of, the, of these waffles are complete in terms of conversion costs, which is where we get the 120,000 for waffles times 25 cents is the 30,000. So although we're, we're totally done and these have all of the costs involved for the ones that are transferred out, the work and process inventory, which are these two numbers added together, will only give us 130,000 of costs. And so the total amount of costs for, um, for June in our mixing department is 655,000. And as you see, this particular number matches the number that we were provided with earlier. <coughs> okay. So on page 103, all four of those steps combined in what's called a production cost report. So we looked at that one step at a time. So the physical units were step one. Uh, the equivalent units were step two. Then we had to calculate unit costs. That was step three. And then we just looked at the reconciliation schedule, which is step four. So this is what the actual report looks like when all four of those steps are completed. They're all put into this particular report. Okay. Um, so this is eventually what all the stuff you're working on will look at, look like in a report form. Okay. All right, here's a, here's a question. <coughs> Pardon me. Largo company has unit costs of $10 for materials and $30 for conversion. If there are 2,500 units in ending work and process, 40% complete to conversion, but fully complete as to material, what's the total cost assigned to work ending work and process, ending work and process inventory? All right, so we know that there's 2,500 units at the uh, ending work and process. We know that all the material costs are, are included already. So 2,500 times 10 will give us the amount for materials. However, what they're saying is, look, of these 2,500 units, only 40% are complete in terms of a conversion rate for costs. So 40% of these units uh, would be a thousand, right? Times thirty dollars for costs. So twenty-five thousand plus the um, oh my god, I'm doing this by my head, and I shouldn't do that. Um, by the thirty thousand should give us B. Oof, I still got it. Okay.
high five to myself. How's that? Um, so that's that's basically what uh, some of the questions are going to be like on your work on your homework. All right. Um, so final comments. I don't have any final comments on that. But let's review the do it exercise, which is on page 104. Um, and then we're going to wrap up today. <clears throat> okay. Um, Rod Rodeo Manufacturing. It's hmm, an interesting name. Um, so in March, uh, Rodeo Manufacturing had the following unit production costs. Material, six bucks. Conversion costs, nine bucks. Okay. On March the 1st, it had no work in process. Great. During March, Rodeo transferred 12,000 units out. So those 12,000 units are totally done, which means they have all of the material costs and all of the conversion costs have to be um, added to that to get the total. However, at the end of March, 800 units were 25% complete when it comes to conversion, but 100% complete when it came to material. So of these 800 units, all of them had materials used. So 800 times $6 each would give us the amount for materials. But in terms of conversion rate, only 25% of these 800 units are done. So 25% of 800 units is 200 units. 200 units times $9 would give you the other portion of what we're looking for, right? So the ones that have been transferred out, 12,000 units times basically $15 would give you $180,000. And as I was saying here, in terms of work in process, all the materials are included in all 800, but only, only a quarter of them have been uh, subject to conversion costs. <clears throat> so the $400 represents material costs, $1,800 represents conversion costs, total of $6,600. When you add that to everything that's been transferred out, the total costs in March for Rodeo Manufacturing were $186,600. And that is what's in your book as well. So this is what's basically coming up um, for your work. Okay, this is the actually the end of chapter three at this point. <clears throat>